Well, good morning. It is, um, what, 8.10. That's when I wanted to start this. Because this is 8.10, it's August 10th, 2020. And I, uh, phew, been an interesting morning. Over in Europe, they do the date differently. They do the, what is it? We do the month, the day, and the year. They do the day, the month, and the year. So the numbers don't quite work out the same for them. But I can only go on what I have over here. But someone sent me a, you know, well, that's, you know, over here we do it this way. So he read the numbers that way. And uh, it's fascinating how it worked out. So why am I here? Well, I'm here because this is what God's put on my heart and I can't get away from it. If you go to anaginosko.org, A-N-A-G-I-N-O-S-K-O.org, it's a video library of uh, the events in my life. I made sure I documented it because it was just that strange to me that um, these things would be happening. There's a movie out there called Knowing with Nicolas Cage, and it's about... Um, a, a, a prophecy unfolding in front of this man's eyes and is, it's brought to him by his uh, child. And in that movie, um, they use numbers and, and they correlate to locations and dates and things like that. It's fascinating that that movie uh, came out um, in 2009, I had already been dealing with the things that I was dealing with since 2007. And, um, but I, I know that regarding time, God lives in a place where time does not exist, and Satan has access to that place to accuse the brethren. And so um, he stands on the other side of time and knows who we are and what we'll do and, and how things are going to work. And then he whispers through thoughts to people and has them write books and do things. It's, this is why Peter says, test the spirits, test your thoughts, which ones are of God, which ones aren't. And we have to go with what's right, go with what's, you know, as, as uh, Jesus said, I suppose it was Paul speaking for Jesus through the Holy Spirit, uh, Philippians 4, 8, whatever's beautiful, whatever's lovely, think upon these things. You know, set your mind upon these things. Uh, offenses come. There's no, there's no way around it. Um, the prodigal son, I, I am, I am that prodigal son, um, and without a doubt, I went and I, I, uh, I'm that prodigal son. <sighs> Don't really want to get into that, but I already had it written down before I, um, I was had other meaning. And then something was revealed to me. But here we go. Um, 810, what is it? Today's date, 810, means prodigality, which is why we're talking about the prodigal son. Prodigality is to, um, is to is, I believe it's unjust. Oh, I'm pretty sure I have to look that up again. But maybe it's, I don't know. Oh, this kills me. I'm going to have to look this up right now. But there's just no other way to do it because I have to. I have to do it. I got sidetracked, and uh, but today's date. I literally I was up at six o'clock. Going, oh, it's the tenth. What do, what do I got to do here? And so uh, I did it. So if you'll bear with me for just a second, I'm going to look this up again and read it. But it has to do with the day. And so, you know, I wanted to get here at 810, speak about 810, on 810. Oh, an abandoned and dissolute life. And uh, so, you know, riot, excess. Did I live that way? Oh, absolutely I lived that way. I, oh, I was an idiot for a long time. And, you know, those, those things... <laughs> cause patterns in my life and I have to be broken of them and God broke me of them he really did it's uh, it's beautiful how he did it um, but that's what we're talking about you know um, the prodigal son went and wasted everything and yet when 
the father saw him, he rushed up to him. And the, old, the, the, the older son didn't understand how that could be. When we're talking about the rapture, and you know we've got people that come and say, "Wow, I, I you know I want to be raptured. I, I believe it and I have faith in it." And 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 they and they, and they talk about it. We get other people that show up and are like, "No, the rapture is not going to happen. It's not going to happen." I said, "That's where it comes into the workers in the vineyard." You know, I've had people respond, "Well, who do you think you are that you don't have to go through?" what people are going through all across the world. There have been martyrs for centuries. How dare you? Well, the workers in the vineyard, that person's a worker, I'm a worker, we're all workers. We don't decide how God spends his money, okay? How he does his thing, what he does with um, his workers. You see, the, the workers that have been working all that time thought that they were gonna get paid more because the people that just showed up got one coin. And when they said, well, how did, why did you, that doesn't seem just, why did you do that? Why did you give these people so much for so little? Shouldn't they have had to work like we worked? And the response in the parable is, who are you? This is my vineyard. This is my money. I'll do with it as I please. What is it to you if I give these people the rapture and you go through what it is you believe you should go through. They made their deal. I don't decide who gets what crown. I don't decide any of it. All I'm doing is trying to make sense, trying to know and understand God's word. But knowing, that's a does not equal sign. Knowing does not equal going. We can know all kinds of stuff. It's what we do. Is that works salvation? No, it isn't. It isn't works salvation at all. We're all saved. But some of us have to do other things than others. Some of us have to be doers of the word and not hearers only. Um, what is true religion? To, to benefit the, um, the widows and the orphans. Am I a widow? No. Am I an orphan? No. I'm a man who was a prodigal who has bad habits. And... I'm paying for those, without a doubt. I'm paying for those. So what is it that we have to do? We've got branches do not equal fruit. Okay, Barry Aw did a thing on the branch being taken by the dove uh, and brought back to Noah. And I didn't get into the whole thing because I, I in my spirit I just knew that wasn't the teaching for me. He's believing that actually tomorrow, I think, August 11th, is going to be um, high watch day. Again, there's a watch, there's a high watch. I don't think much of high watch days. I believe in one particular feast for many particular reasons. Um, so I'm not, I'm not going to go with what he says. And he talks about branches and he talks about fruit and his thing is all about the branches. Well, branches are where birds nest and fruit comes from bees. So we're gonna have a birds and bees talk here. It's gonna be strange, but you know, branches are meant for nothing but burning. They, they, they take the branches and they burn them. They take the branches and they prune them away if they have no fruit. And the only way for you to have fruit on a branch is if a bee comes and pollinates the flower. And this is the birds and bees talk because when we talk about knowing in the Bible, to know someone in the Bible was to have intimate relations with that person. And from that knowing usually came a child. So from the knowing on the flower, the branches bear fruit. And if they don't bear fruit, they get tossed aside. So there's your birds and bees talk. Jesus says, you know, why, why, why is knowing not the deal? And certain works are works of iniquity. Casting out demons, working wonders, and prophesying, these people that come to Jesus and say, you know, well, didn't we do these things in your name? Lord, Lord. They know Jesus is Lord. They, they're calling him Lord. But he says, you know, get away from me, you workers of iniquity. How can you cast out demons, work wonders, and prophesy the Lord's word and still be cast out? Because there's only one thing that the Lord requires. This is your one thing. My one thing 
the one thing I need to be doing is Micah 6, 7 through 8. And I will read that because that's important. Here we go. Micah 6, 7 and 8. Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for my sin, for the sin of my soul? He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Let's see. There it is. That's what the Lord requires. Three things. One, two, and three. Love mercy, righteousness, humbly with God. Six, seven, eight. I had somebody um, stop by and uh, we emailed each other back and forth, and um, the name Van Wick came up, and it reminded me of the Van Wick Expressway in New York City, uh, which is right next to the airport. You know, so here I am talking about the movie knowing the Van Wick, um, and in that movie there's an aircraft that crashes. It crashes, uh, not in New York, but in Boston. And because the sign at the crash says Logan Airport, and I know that Logan Airport is in Boston. Um, the side of that plane says this down here. These are the, these are the, uh, the FAA call letters for the plane. And I don't think it's a real FAA call letter. I think they're different than that. But I find it interesting, and I've always found it interesting, that in this movie, um, that can be read E-V-L. What word sounds like E-V-L? Evil. Evil, evil, J C. Reading it this direction, it's evil and J C. I think they're taking a slam on Jesus. Of course, that's what Hollywood's always done is taking a slam on Jesus. They've never represented him properly. Um, the road sign is for 95. That is a highway in Boston. But when you look up 95, it means unjust and silver. It means unjust in the Greek, and it means silver in the um, in the Hebrew. And that just reminds me of Jesus and the unjust, or Judas, well, Jesus as well, but Judas and the unjust silver, the silver that he got for betraying Christ. And, you know, this, this industry in Hollywood has gained a lot by misrepresenting Christ and by uh, worshiping their deity. And that's, that's just what they do, you know. Um, Micah 678, uh, let's see. The Van Wick in New York City is Highway 678. And when you look up 678, it means partiality. And James 2.9 says, don't show partiality. Don't show partiality to anybody. Don't judge. Don't say what, you know, this person should do that. These people shouldn't go in the rapture and they should be here with us and how dare the martyrs how dare you think that you know you're such a person that the martyrs uh, have to martyr themselves and you don't look my mother wasn't a martyr but I know she's in heaven my father wasn't a martyr he's in heaven um, they lived lives that were honorable to God it just is what it is we don't decide what we get to do I don't you think I chose this life you think I somehow wanted to be this guy I told the guy who came to me with Jesus in 1999 that he could go himself. That's how I felt about it at the time. And yet, because Christ presented himself in an undeniable way, I changed. And I changed to the best of my ability. And he's still working out the details in that change. But I don't get control over the life I live. I don't get to be the person I, I think I would like to be. I had all kinds of thoughts about who I would be and how my life would go surprise. I think the prodigal son thought that he was going to go and waste everything. No, he, he had a good plan. It just wasn't God's plan. We don't get to choose. That's why we can't judge. So it's not work salvation, but once you're saved and you have the Holy Spirit, 
there will be works, and they will be works of this sort. Those people possessing the Holy Spirit will do these things. They'll love righteousness. They'll walk humbly before God. So the doing isn't this type of doing. It's not working iniquity. It's not doing all that stuff. It's simply the fruit of the Spirit, allowing the fruit of the Spirit to reach through you to others and give them what they need, in mostly in the form of whatever they need, widows and orphans. True religion, according to James, is helping widows and orphans, of which I am neither. I said that in one of my videos. I'm like, you're not here to support me. I, you know, those who do not work do not eat. I appreciate your support. Trust me, I do. But that's not that's not the point of this. And if it was the point of this, I'd have been hounding dollars for years. I started this thing, 2007. My contributors list is probably. I'm not going to say. This isn't what this is about. I'm defending myself because of something someone said to me, and I shouldn't. I'm here to present a message, and that is Micah 6 8. It's really simple. It's not about knowing all these things that makes the difference. Do we need to know what day? Yeah, we need to, we need to be aware that there's a day coming, and we should understand as much as we can, and, and the fruit of the Spirit will drive us towards a greater relationship with Christ. But the bottom line is, is are we doing what he says? You know, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do as I say? Get away from me, you workers of iniquity. So when people come to my channel and they want to tell me how the rapture is BS and it's not going to happen, I just put them over in that category that doesn't understand. And they're still workers in the vineyard, and they'll still get paid, but they're upset because they feel that it's somehow inequitable that one should get one destiny and another should get another destiny. And it's not ours to decide. It's Jesus's to decide. And that's what the workers in the vineyard is all about. So when Jesus says, get away from me, you workers of iniquity, Matthew 7, 21, 23, he says, I never knew you. Well, if knowing is to have intimate relations and out of that comes a baby, because when a husband knows his wife, so forth and so on. He never knew us. He never put his spirit in those people who are still working iniquity. They may believe they have the spirit, but he says, I never knew you. He never got inside them. And that's between them and God. That's between them. And if, and, and if a person realizes that, they need to ask, Lord, be baptized of the Holy Spirit. Let the Spirit into you. Ask Him for the Holy Spirit. There's no way. Well, I suppose there is a way. This is prophesying. This is prophesying. I haven't cast out any devils. Well, actually, I have. Um, I haven't worked any wonders that I'm aware of. But I definitely know what's going on. Do I have the fruit of the Spirit? I'll let you decide. But I do believe that God's Word is true. And I do believe that I understand it appropriately. And that's my job, is to relay that to you. We have to come as children. Little children don't know anything, but they trust. And they believe. And when you tell them, hey, I'm going to do this for you, they believe that, that it'll be done. And Jesus said he would do this for his children. It's in the Word. It's there. Go research it. Um, he's given me plenty of signs to believe that this is what he's going to do. And uh, there's nothing else I can do about it. Did I want to be this guy? Did I want to be a prodigal son? No. But I am. But I am. The workers in the vineyard. It's not our vineyard. The world is not ours to decide how to run. It's God's, and he's already decided how he's going to run it. And he enters into the hearts of kings and generals and makes them do what they do, and the same works for all the rest of us. As much as we would like to think that we control our lives, we don't. We don't. And 
we have to trust that God is with us. And we'll know that because we'll be doing the fruit of the Spirit because He knew us and put that Spirit in us. Don't show partiality. Don't judge. Nobody really chooses their life. We're given roles to play and we play them. And uh, I think that's it today. God bless. Take care.